Hello, hello. It is us, the average fits, consisting of Ryan and I, Jeremiah. Okay. Today we are joined by a specimen of a man. Um, Mr. Okay, maybe I let him introduce himself. Okay. So I'm Shafiq. I'm a track and field athlete. I think he's uh, downplaying it too yeah, much. <laughs> so he's he's not just a track and field athlete. He's a national runner, specializing in the 800 meters. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Okay, so he's he's basically one of the fastest runners in Singapore, lah. So, if just now, <laughs> if just now in the clips you 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 you, you couldn't catch that, you you, <laughs> you couldn't understand that he's one of the fastest. <laughs> yes, he's one of the fastest. Yeah, he freaking smoked us out of the water, man. We were freaking struggling, and then this guy is like walk in the park, bro. <laughs> okay, but enough of that. The purpose of this uh video, the uh this sit down session is basically to get a, a more in depth look of how a professional athlete, uh, does his training. Uh, and bal- and how he balances life and uh, his nutrition and whatnot lah, all that good stuff. Okay, so let's get right on it. Okay, so Shafiq, how long have you been training, and are you training for an- anything that's upcoming? All right, so I've been training since uh, end of twenty eleven. So this is actually my tenth year of training. In terms of upcoming competitions, I'm actually racing end of next week, and end of March. In an attempt to qualify for ASEAN University Games, yeah. Say it again, but louder. <laughs> ASEAN University Games. Mm, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What was the ASEAN University Games all about? So it's like uh, all the universities in Southeast Asia will send like representatives to compete. Uh. It's like Sea Games, but f- at the university level. Okay. Yeah. So you're representing NTU, uh. It's more like a combined uni team. Oh, so Singapore okay. will send a team of athletes. So you're representing Singapore. <laughs> <laughs> Singapore universities uh, Hopefully Very nice And you'll be doing The 800? For sure The 800 800 Okay Are there any, uh, are there any uh, Running events That you take part in Besides the 800? I've actually competed In every distance From 400 To 21k At least once Yeah Okay Ryan and I We are both curious uh, What are What is your PRs For Let's say From the 400 All the way up Till the 10, 10 km. Alright, so for the 400, I run like just over 52 seconds. 800 in 2 minutes on the dot. 1500 in 420. 1 mile in 435. Uh, 2.4 in 732. Uh, 2.5 in what again? 732. For the boys at the back over there, they couldn't hear. 732. 732, <laughs> guys. Uh, 3k in 929. 4.8 in 1535. 5k in 1650 and 10k in 3720. Yeah, that's about it. 10 <laughs> okay, we need to process that a bit. <laughs> okay, what, what comes to mind right now is basically, you know how a lot of people they say that Singapore, like we don't really have a lot of uh, talented athletes, right? But I think you gotta, you gotta do a workout with them and then you finally realize, right? Like how crazy fit they are. La. Yeah. I think even in the Olympics, right, you see the slowest guy and then you're laughing at him, right? But then if you actually race him, right, he's like the top 1%, bro. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yes. So it's like a reality check for all of you out there. Right. So nutrition is a very important part of our routine from the top athlete all the way down to the average person. So Shafiq, how is your diet like? Honestly, when I first started out, I was really, really strict about my diet, you know? It's like really unmarinated chicken, steamed rice, that kind of disgusting stuff, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Yeah, uh. chicken and broccoli. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all that. But because I've been in this sport like for really long, right, 10 years, I, I realised like the mental toll that your diet can actually have on you. You know, for a lot of people, like food is like cathartic, you know? Mm. Nice. So to have to eat food that you don't enjoy every day sometimes can actually affect my training morale. So what I try to do instead is I stick to like a few simple rules to keep my diet in check. But other than that, I honestly eat quite liberally. So for example, I don't take sugar. I don't take carbonated or sweet drinks. And I mean, I don't take artificial sugaring or like added sugar, you know? So like kopi o kosong. <laughs> yeah. And I stay away from fast food entirely. Other than that, I usually have two meals a day. I stick to like a intermittent fast, the eight to sixteen, yeah. So how how would a, t- a typical meal look like? 
Uh, I usually try to have carbs before training. I stick to really simple rules to keep it like as stress free as possible. Yeah, so I have carbs before training and protein after training. That's about it. By that, I don't mean that my first meal doesn't have protein at all. Uh, I'm just like, you know, it's a huge amount of carbs. Like I have like maybe one point five servings of pasta or rice. But not plain, right? I hope not plain. Not okay. plain. Right? The heck? Some sauce, ah. Uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. As much as nutrition is really, really important for like your physical progress, morale yeah, is just yeah. as important. Mm. And especially if you're doing high intensity training, you need to keep it high. So, part of my whole like diet outlook is that I want to keep it as stress free as possible. Yeah, keeping the drinks to once per month. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you heard it here, folks. No sugary drinks. No carbonated drinks. No fast food. No, I think that's too strict. Man. That's too strict. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. So basically, what he's trying to say is that right now he's very flexible with his diet. He's not um holding back too much. What he's trying to say is uh keep it sustainable. Make sure that your diet is sustainable and is clean. Okay. Okay. So actually, I know Shafiq since uh from army, and during our commissioning right right leading up to the commissioning uh, parade, his uh ankle got compromised, and so as a professional athlete. I I really want to know how does someone uh, like him cope with injury, and how serious is such an injury to his whole career as a as a as a professional athlete. So in my career, I've actually only had one major injury, which is when I tore my inner thigh in twenty sixteen. It wasn't a very bad tear, but the issue was I didn't really take the recovery seriously. So I tore it around six weeks before nationals. I only took like three weeks off, and then I went for nationals. You know, <laughs> and it's just because I really wanted to win. So I lost sight of like the long term. I didn't realize like how not taking a recovery seriously would set back my career by a few years. So after that season where I didn't really pay attention to my injury, I couldn't run the same for around two and a half years. You know, and it wasn't just because of NS like. It's just training was like close to impossible because I kept on trying to dive back in. I kept on trying to just do what I used to be able to do. In terms of actually returning from injury properly and pain free, I only really nailed it last year. And how I did so was I really focused a lot on rehabilitation and strength training, really uh, targeting the affected area. Making sure that it like catches up, cause you know in the process of recovery, like I wasn't very disciplined. I like limped a lot, you know, developed a lot of muscle imbalances, and because I was still trying to train at a high level during the injury, like everything else would like compensate for the tear. So I I really developed a lot of muscle imbalances, which was like showing <laughs> in even in terms of like the size of my quad. Like my left quad was bigger than my right quad, you know. Size doesn't matter. Huh. Does it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I was told that. <laughs> size matters, though. Size matters. Oh. Coming, <laughs> <laughs> hey, how 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 about how about your ankle? I I I remember leading up to commissioning, you you were limping around, and they almost pulled you out from from parade commander. You know, not uh, contingent commander. Yeah. So, what what happened then? I actually tore my ATFL. It's a ligament on the anterior side of the ankle. The ATFL. <laughs> <laughs> It's a ligament on the anterior side of the ankle, and I just really didn't want to drop out of the parade. I felt quite pointless. Well, was it? How how serious were you rate that that in, that injury? I think honestly, if you just stay off your feet, it can heal in under a month. But because I was stubborn, I didn't stay off my feet, and after that. Went to unit and I just kept on going outfield and it just because of that, it only fully recovered around nine months later. It's a recurring problem for me where I just don't take injuries seriously until it's too late. But now there's a lesson learned from that. This year I actually tore my LCL. It last year I mean I tore my LCL. The LCL. Ah, yes. <laughs> ah. What's next? The CFTR. <laughs> <laughs> my gosh. Yeah. Okay. Can you elaborate? Where is the What what did he say? LCL. LCL. So LCL is on the side of the knee, uh-huh. the outside of the knee. Okay. Okay. It's like sort of like connected to the IT band. Mm. So I when I tore that, I 
actually took the recovery very seriously and I managed to bounce back from it in just over a month. Yeah, and then I started running as per normal. But now, everything is 100%? 100%, man. For the so for, for those people who are suffering from an injury, um, your recommendation is basically to take it easy, take it light, and then focus on strength training. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, because when you try and train as per normal, when you have an injury, for starters, your other muscles will start to compensate mm-hmm. from it. You'll start training other stuff as well. It could develop into further injuries. You'll be slowing down the recovery and you'll start getting frustrated at yourself. Because it's just impossible to hit the same level while you're injured. So there's a psychological factor as well. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, when you realize that you're going slower than before, or like you're not lifting as heavy as before, even though you have this injury and you start blaming yourself, yeah, your morale dips, you know? Mm. Mike low. Yeah, Mike low. So okay. just lay back, take it easy, rest up, and do the rehab for that muscle, huh? Okay, but this is just a disclaimer. This is not medical advice. We are not medical professionals. <laughs> Always seek medical attention before commencing any training program. Okay? Okay, so actually, all I, all I learned from his answer was just take it easy. <laughs> <laughs> so you've seen the, the title of uh, our channel, which is The Average Fit, dedicated for the average person to get fit. Um, what kind of advice do you have uh, for the general population out there uh, in order to reach their fitness goals. Okay, so any advice I have really only extends to aerobic fitness, but my advice is to not jump into trying to do like high intensity stuff, you know, really take some time, build a good foundation, build a good like aerobic base by doing your low intensity runs, you know, and don't like discount the value of strength training. You know, all these, this strong foundation is really what's going to take you far it's what's gonna like prevent you from getting injured it's what's going to make your fitness sustainable basically like it's easy to just like get fit for your IPPT you know run one solid 2.4 and then after that you let go but if that's not your goal if your goal is to really get lean get fit feel good about yourself you want to make sure you can do it for a long time mm. so don't overtrain. ease yourself into it <laughs> ease yourself into it and just don't hurt your body, yeah. That's it. Do what's mentally and physically sustainable. Okay. If you want more information, watch our video on how to train for IPPT down below. <laughs> um, pretty much very similar to what he said just now. Uh, yeah. So see, now he's uh, accredited by a professional athlete right here. <laughs> yeah. So if you didn't believe us, see. Yeah. <laughs> he says it. Huh? Okay. We have come to the end of the casual sit down session with Shafiq. So. What now? Makeup. Whoa. Whoa. Whoa, I'm getting confused, guys. <laughs>